Thank you very much, Margaret. Uh, as she was talking, I was uh, remembering some of the experiences working with African immigrants in the community. It's really, you have to have like a stealth operation. You have to trick and, 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 and connive with the doctor. And really, like she said, if I'm working with the Ethiopian community, I cannot be seen with anything whatsoever that says HIV or AIDS. Or if a woman comes with her husband, we have to tell him, go sit, do something, and you know, smuggle her into the doctor's office to get her uh, shots. Um, so a lot of times, even though we have language, linguistically appropriate materials and trained staff, that's not where it ends. So stigma really um, is a very, very, uh, uh, determined enemy in terms of really uh, impacting our community. I feel it's important because a lot of times people say, well, why should we care about Africans now on top of everything else? Well, it's a virus. It just needs a, one body, goes to another body. So that's it, you know. Um, in, 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 in this case, uh, this is really, for the African community, a starting point. And as my colleagues talked about, the different nuances and, and, and subtleties that impact, again, the diversity of the African reality. If you are from East Africa, your, your stigma scale goes up the roof. If you're from North Africa, you, you're in complete denial. If you're from West, maybe you know you are able to have a conversation. So that we're really looking also for the youth, the new generation, the, the ones that have been here who do not have the baggage to kind of interface and make that transition. Uh, as I said earlier, um, I'm very grateful to work with very two very important ladies. Dr. E.J. Otibu is a professor of microbiology with extensive experience in developing innovative and inquiry-based model curriculum to enhance students' experience. She's the director of the AIDS Awareness Resource Center at the Montgomery College. She also has a deep interest in public health, especially as it affects the quality care of, for, for vulnerable population, including low-income minority communities, specifically African immigrant community. Dr. EJ is also an author of four microbiology books. She really, to me, exemplifies the hard work she does, shows that anybody, everybody can do something about HIV AIDS. Dr. EJ, please. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for having me. Howard University, you rock. Yes. And I'd like to thank the colleagues that have spoken before me. I'm an African immigrant myself. I came to this country, went to school here, Boston College, NYU, and then University of Toronto. So I'm well versed with the immigrant challenges and issues. But having said that, uh, my predecessor, the Margaret Cotto, said that um, we have to um, by the way, I'm happy to mention that I'm one of the co-authors of the curriculum, and we have two curriculum, like she said. So what I have done today is to take excerpts from each of the curriculum. So I'm going to address you guys as participants, whether you're providers or whether you're community members, it still jives. Thank you. And I have to warn you, it's a bit graphic. My presentations are a bit graphic. I take photographs from my book. and. Um, is there any under 18 in the house? No? OK, let's go. <laughs> HIV stigma in African immigrant populations. Um, first of all, uh, some of the points that Margaret has made already, I'm just going to skip. There are so many slides. And I, when I get to the salient points, I'm going to highlight some of the, uh, uh, some of the slides. Well, which one are you? You're either affected or infected. This is uh, a statement from a couple whose son died. So when our son died, we decided that we should make public the cause of his death. We did this because we wanted to help society stop stigmatizing people suffering from AIDS-related illnesses. How did I come into doing HIV work, apart from the fact that I have a PhD in microbiology and virology is one of the, uh, uh, one of the units microbiology. My cousin died and on her deathbed she said to me, let my epitaph read. 
that I died of red tape, that I must continue this work because of her, because even us, by extension, we were stigmatized. They say that one, they, they have HIV in their family, runs in the family, but you and I know that HIV, it's not genetic, but be it as it may, that's how I came into uh, working with HIV individuals and then doing this, the work that I do. So I want to uh, advocate that everybody love, live, and share life with people living with HIV AIDS. Well, there's so much in the introductions, but these all include some of the challenges and some of the nuances that African immigrants go through. And uh, as an African immigrant, you're faced with a, a, a swath of all kinds of challenges. Uh, first of all, you're not used to public display of affection. At, at Boston College, when I first got there, I see people kissing. This is something we, we shut off the lights in the room shut all the doors and go under the table to do, if at all you have to do that. So this, these are some of the challenges. And then issues with going uh, self-medication. You can't go here and buy antibiotics. Like, if I feel somehow, I just go to any, any chemist and pick up any antibiotics, even codeine. But it doesn't happen here. This is just to highlight some of the challenges that we have. And then to worsen it with the HIV issue, the stigmatization and all kinds of, uh, um, all kinds of uh, challenges that come with it makes it impossible for you to actually uh, be successful uh, outside your own country. Even in your own country is worse, as we're going to see. But um, Africans, we don't talk about sex. In fact, one of, the, uh, one of the presentations we gave in Virginia, we said Africans don't have sex, they have babies. It's only when there's baby to make that your husband pushes you down, climbs on you, and that's it. It's over, and you're going to carry the pregnancy nine months. Okay, uh, stigma and discrimination, of course, uh, form many barriers, especially for African immigrants. Care-seeking uh, challenges are there, and they're testing, disclosure. Um, in fact, I think that the top on the list with regards to barriers to uh, testing and barriers to care and everything is stigma. They'd rather travel miles to get tested than to visit their clinic right within their own environment because of stigma. And of course, the goal of the training is to help participants, whether you're caregivers, whether you're community members, uh, to understand and recognize stigma and discrimination, we all st stigmatize, trust me. When, if we have time and do the activities, you'll find out that somewhere down the line, you have stigmatized somebody. And I'm going to show you some pictures uh, of people that have been stigmatized and um, we'll get to feel it and then uh, look at our own, uh, our own issues with stigmatization. And of course, we're going to uh, try and map out strategies to uh, decrease stigma and discrimination in our various communities, hopefully. Of course, we also have to identify our own per, uh, perceptions and personal beliefs, and this will help us uh, work better with our African immigrant clients. And of course, this is also to prepare participants in cross-cultural and cultural competency skills to work with this fragile population. Well, the objectives is a lot, and uh, just go ahead and read as you come. I'll just take a uh, few of them. Well, at least at the end of the training, uh, rather at the end of this workshop, uh, participants will be able to feel what it feels like to be stigmatized, especially when you have HIV AIDS, and also to define and recognize these various types of stigma. And uh, of course, you know, um, describe the consequences uh, of stigma and discrimination, and also look at the impact of HIV and stigma among this fragile population, which are the African immigrants, and how the impact go or result in forming barriers to care. And then, then we can start thinking about strategies on how to uh, take care of this uh, uh, problem. Also, uh, I'm sure that some people, maybe among you, some of first of all, I'd like to recognize my students. They're here, microbiology students from Montgomery College. Thank you for coming. <laughs> and um, also, participants uh, will increase their knowledge 
of African cultural customs, traditions, and then begin to have a feel of how these immigrants present when they come to your office to seek for medical care. Look at a baby with hydrocephalus. Think about being in a country where this is not seen every day. That's part of stigmatization. And the next photograph or picture is a lady, she's a medical doctor. On my medical mission to, uh, to Nigeria, I met her and she said to me, if only I could be touched, if only somebody can treat me like a human being, uh, even my own husband, then I will die and know that I, I will draw my last breath knowing that somebody cared. I put her on my, on my laps and I was discussing with the doctors. Then the next thing, she closed her eyes and uh, I told them, return her to the ward, they say she's dead. Of course, I cried myself to the airport. I was leaving back to the United States on that day. But to think that the husband gave her this uh, 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 virus and they wouldn't even talk to her. The husband hasn't come down with a full-blown AIDS. That stigma right there within the family, within the nuclear family. There are some key factors that we need to get used to, of course, uh, that affect the care-seeking behavior. Stigma, of course, affects attitudes about sexuality in the country of origin and cultures. I told you we don't discuss sex anyhow. Even as I stand before you, I have never discussed sex with my children. My own mother never discussed sex. When I started men menstruating, she told me, if a man crosses your leg, you're pregnant, which was the reason why I, I sat cross-legged. The man walked over me. I ran after him with all the strength in me. And when I caught up with her, I said, you're taking me home because I'm pregnant. The man said, you must be crazy. But that's, that is the way it is. And we're going to touch on issues such as gender, okay, and inequality, and the link to HIV and some of the challenges that are involved. Okay? Religion is another a uh, key factor that plays a major role in the lives of African immigrants, okay? And uh, we always believe that sickness is from God and that uh, maybe somebody went past you and winked you and that's an evil eye and automatically you have HIV. But as caregivers and providers, you need to have this at the back of your mind. And uh, when they present in your clinic and they try to tell you about all of these nuances, Please be sympathetic. Do not look at them as if they're stupid because they may not come back to the clinic to seek for medical help. So you need to negotiate with them, talk to them. Oh, I understand, but I want you to see the other side of the coin. Some of the roots and some reasons for stigma, okay? Well, we know that HIV is linked to negative uh, attributes like death, promiscuity, you know, and also premarital premarital sex, extramarital sex, sex between men, and all that. And in terms of religion, it's linked to sex, sex to sin, and sin to divine punishment. So all these are the challenges that this uh, fragile population is going through. And of course, uh, people judge you. Here in the United States, we even have a little freedom. From where I come from in Africa, Nigeria, the west coast of Africa, automatically, even if it is that your husband gave you this virus, still, as a woman, you gave it to him, whether you like it or not. Oh, this is uh, some pictures. This is to depict, this is me in Senegal with some members, uh, some uh, faculty from Montgomery College. We were on a mission to uh, Senegal. And uh, the people you see are patients, HIV patients. They are quarantined. They, they are like in a prison, and nobody visits them. So. Some of them, after we hugged some of the patients, won't even talk to me back at the hotel. So this is to tell you what we go through in the various parts of the world, okay? And we know that culture plays a major role um, with uh, HIV stigma, of course. But you do know that culture is the lens through which we make sense of the world and interact with people. Culture is dynamic, fragmented, contested, complex, and contradictory. Culture can empower, it can also exclude or exploit. And it can lead us to judge, impose, or discriminate. So, but I want you to know that Africans, with their culture, it's difficult to erase that culture from them, even when they are away from the countries of origin. So we need to find common ground to work with them, and then kind of agree with what they believe, but only to negotiate and find a common ground to be able to work together. 
Women, gender, and equity is very important. Like I said, Africans don't have sex, they have babies. You cannot negotiate sex with your husband, and you cannot deny your husband sex. It's an abomination, and, and I calls for divorce or kicking you out of the house. So I just want to highlight some of the uh, important uh, factors uh, with regards to women, gender, equity, and HIV AIDS, okay? Um, a woman endures stigma and violence from birth. From the day you're born, your parents are not happy because you're a girl. My auntie had eight children. She had seven girls because she's still looking for a boy to be able to belong to the husband's family. She had eight children and one boy at the end. But there have been instances where they have maybe 12 children, all 12 girls, and of course they're kicked out. So being a born a girl is a big mistake. And the girls are needed when young and rejected when old. Four minutes, okay. I'll just flip through because I have some slides that I want you to, uh, to look at, okay? Meaning of it, of course, you know that we Africans, we have multiple sex partners and um, it's accepted that a man will have multiple sex partners. And there's a link between cultural and personal hygiene and practices such as female, uh, female genital mutilation. When some of your, your, your um, clients present, some of them have gone through that and they may not be able to talk or want to be examined, especially if the uh, physician is a man. Okay, this is some of the graphic pictures I was talking about. They call it sometimes at the young age and when they do, they tie their legs so that they heal. And of course, um, HIV is linked to female genital mutilation because sometimes the same instrument is used to uh, cut so many girls and uh, it's not anesthetized, it's not sterilized. So, and of course, this is what is left after the, the, uh, the sewing up of that area. And of course, the participants need to be educated about cultural practices that may contribute to HIV transmission and know that there's FGM and vaginal cleansing still occurring Okay, it still happens. And of course, you have to find a way to assist these women to live a normal life because it's a, it's a scar in their life and then it, it doesn't allow them to uh, go to uh, seek care when they, uh, when they are afflicted. Okay, so there's also, I dedicated this to a friend of mine that, that was killed as a, as a result of uh, domestic violence. If you, don't, if you refuse sex to your husband, it can beat you up. And uh, if you bring anything to the house, even when it's him that brought it, it's a big problem. So I'm just going to flip through the, 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 um, the slides, okay? And there's a reason, there are reasons why we women tolerate uh, domestic violence. You can't go to your mother or anybody and talk to them. They'll say to you, leave the man alone, go look after your children. So it's accepted. Okay, and there are several impacts of stigma. Of course, most of them have been articulated, so I cannot overemphasize them. Disclosure issues, and um, of course, fear of rejection, immigration issues. There's just so so much. Okay, and of course. Uh, confidentiality is an issue. It is very important that when your patients visit you, you must assure them that it's strictly confidential. If they don't have that trust. You will, not, you will lose them. And of course, you keep losing others. Nobody is going to present. So we all need to be educated about cultural practices, be knowledgeable about FGM and vaginal cleansing, of course, and be able to assist these women and uh, address our own uh, uh, issues and cultural practices to be able to help them. There's always a link between, uh, H, I mean, um, a link between other sexually transmitted diseases and HIV. As long as you have the, you are able to pick up a sexually transmitted infection, you are open for HIV as well. I would have loved to show you him, but I, I think I'll have to stop. Thank you so much for your attention.